see Bishop Taylor. Good to see you, Doc. How you doing? All, we all of the pastors, raise your hand. Pastor, minister, woo. Pat, one, two. Wait, you know, come on, raise your hand. Raise your, okay. I'm going to take you downtown tomorrow for now and support you. Don't help me preach this message. I saw you. I saw your building there. Yeah. <laughs> Administrative building, so I, I I find my way. I'm a, I'm a old soldier. I, I find my way. I will find you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You come to hear a word from the Lord. I tell you, I pray that you did because I, that's all I got for you, man. I I want to sit. I want to come right down here where you at, so I can see your eyeball to eyeball that you can't get away from me. Amen. I'm so excited. Like I said last, but I'm so happy to be here with Dr. Foster. I tell you, you have a fine pastor, that, 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 a fine young man. Give that a hand. I tell you, I tell you, that's a, that's a faithful brother. Amen. That's a faithful brother. Man, he came all the way to South uh, South Carolina to participate with, with, with us and with Dr. Tony Evan. And uh, I tell you, he did an awesome job, for an awesome job. Just like his wife taught him. I appreciate that. Amen. <laughs> did an awesome job. And you have a beautiful first lady, Pastor Pat. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful family. Y'all have a beautiful family, man, first family. I think I pray you treat them right because if you don't, they can always come to South Carolina wherever. You know, does it get cold here in the wintertime? Y'all get snow and all that kind of stuff? See, I saw those hills and stuff. And I, oh, I had a flashback to Fort Drum. I'm like, oh, mm, mm. Uh, I, I, and then I saw that sign, 220. We used to come through here, take 81, that ran up in Runout. Ooh, my wife said, honey, that, 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 that they run up. We go to run up when we go to Fort Drum. I was, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Thank God for deliverance. Amen. Listen, I'm happy for, I'm happy to be here tonight. Let me take out my time so I won't go over my time that I set for me. But I tell you what, I do have a word from the Lord. Uh, I'm so excited to be here with Dr. Foster. I mean, you, you know, very few people, you know, I, 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 I you know, I, I, I love them so much. I rearrange some stuff. I don't do that for everybody, man. I'm telling you, uh, because I, I did it for him. I, I would do it for him. Dr. Foster called. Okay, let me see. Let me move some stuff. He said, if this date won't work, we'll go with this one. So we found the date, amen, that we could come. So I wanted to come here to see y'all. Amen. Y'all good people, man. I love y'all. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. I love to come here, man. I have a good time. You know, when I come here, I feel right at home. Dr. Paul said, you all right? I said, yeah, man. I said, I'm just, he said, well, yeah, I, said, I just came down, get down the street there to get something to eat. He said, what? I said, man, I can find a place. I, you know, I can find a, I find it. Amen. So I had a good time. I feel right at home when I come. Y'all make me feel good. Make me feel right at home. So if y'all don't help me, we, I'm telling you, we, I'm, we're going to talk. Preach this lesson. Amen. You know I'm loud. You, you know I'm loud, right? I've been here before. So why you be quiet? You didn't have to say it like that. She said, yes. That was a little too loud. Amen. So let's go to the word of God. I want to get in there tonight. Praise God. I'm excited. Man, if you didn't, uh, if you missed that meeting with Dr. Tony Evans, man, you missed something. That thing was awesome. Joshua, go to the book of Joshua. Chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to try to take my time on tonight, but I'm not going to promise you anything. I said I'm going to try, but not promise anything. Joshua, chapter 1. Let me start with a word of prayer because there's some things that I want to go with tonight. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you that we spoke freely, unhindered, unchecked by an outside forces. We thank you, God, that you will have your way, that you will be glorified and edified. And God, we stand ready to receive now. And God, these rapid words that you have given me, let it go forth to minister to your people, destroying yokes and removing burdens. In Jesus' name, amen. Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to let you come on and stand with me. And I want to read verses 1 and 2, whatever translation you have. I want you to read it real loud. And 
whatever translation you have, read it real loud. Verses 1 and 2. Read it. Read it. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you so very much. Let me talk to you tonight for about an hour and a half. I think it'll be that. Is that all right? <laughs> Sister Kobe said you're okay now. All right. But let me talk to you for a while tonight because I want to divest myself of what the Lord has placed in me tonight. So I want to take my time. Uh, now, I'm a little bit loud, and I know that. But I try to be dignified and all this kind of stuff, but it just don't work with me. You know, it worked fine with my wife. She's nice. She's the teacher. Amen. She she taught elementary school for, what, 20-some years and all this kind of stuff. I didn't teach elementary kids. Well, I did. They were called BEH, Behavior Emotional Handicap. At that time, I don't, I'm not sure what they call them now. The ones that used to fight and throw chairs. You know what? They didn't fight and throw chairs in my class. And, I mean, they didn't, they didn't act up. And even some of the parents said, well, my kids don't act like that. They don't act like that at home. They act different. I said, because your kid won't let me. <laughs> you can't say that now. You don't do that now. But, you know, so I know. I, but, see, I love the Lord because I know where he brought me from. Let me stick this out. Maybe I heard it real. I know what he has done for me. Now, maybe he hasn't done anything to you. Maybe you, I like to mess with my wife every now and then. My wife never been in a fight in her life. Amen? That's good. I, I, that, that's not me. Okay, thank you. My, my sister doesn't mean me either. You know? But, you know, I got, I got, I got beat. I got whoopings. Anybody know what I'm talking about? My wife tell me, don't say you got a whooping. Say you got a spank or something. I didn't get Spank. I got a whooping. Hey man, anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all, y'all, y'all see, man. Now, I'm in the see that so 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 she'll know y'all. I'm not by myself. See, they got whoopings up in Virginia. Hey Amen. Let's look at it. Now, so take my now Joshua. Let's look at this. The Lord is talking to Joshua, and he says, Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister. God is talking to Moses, and he's, I didn't, I, you know, I said, Lord, I don't really want to preach this tonight, you know. Give me something else. I mean, I got some revelation. I got some sermon. You haven't even let me preach yet. Let me give me something else. He'll go deep. But you know what? Sometimes we need the things that, that, that to be reminded of some things. Is that right? So this is what he gave me. Brother. I was up in New York last week with Pastor Finn, and I hit on this song, and, and I saw him in the hallway the next day. He stopped me and said, Doc, you messed me up with that, man. We, we had a whole conversation about this message, about part of just one verse, and we didn't get a chance to finish it. But let's look at this. I'm going to break this down. Now, I'm former military. Any former military folks here? What were you in? Marine. For five. How many years did you do? Oh, I don't blame you. That's enough. Who else? Who else? What, 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 who? Navy? Where are you stationed? No? Okay, yeah, I was Navy for about three years. Camp Pendleton with the Marines. Yes, sir. Jawheads. Marines are a different breed of folks. <laughs> Their mission is different. Is that right? I mean, they they different. Marines, I love, I love the Marines. Something wrong with the boys, but I love them. Now, Marines, if they if they tell you, at least the ones that I with me at Camp Pendleton, if they love you like you, they love you. But if they don't, they won't bother with you. Is that about right? They don't have no time for you. They won't even fake it. They, they won't. They just, it's cut and dry, man. If they give you something that says simplify, like a sticker or something like that, you receive that with gladness, man, because they just don't give that stuff to anybody. I got cup, simplify. They, I went to, this is not to be my message. Yes, it is. It is. But see, I, I was in, 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 in California, and this guy 
they was all with me, and he got all huffed with me, and I had some Marines with me. Then we was on the roof, and the joker was getting ready to come off. He talked about he saw me and all like this. He said, man, why you put that stuff in my dumpster and all that? And I said, well, the lady told me that he had a dumpster for the food, and I thought that was it. I said, no problem. He was huffing and puffing. Well, it was one Saturday. The Marines were with me. They were looking on. They was on the roof, working on the roof, and uh, he was huffing and puffing. And then I said, I'm sorry, we get it out. And so late on that night, they said, hey, chap. I said, yeah. I said, we were watching him. I said, what do you mean? He said, if he had got too close, we were going to get him. I said, what do you mean you were going to get him? We were going to take him out. That's how the Marines think. You don't mess with their chap and somebody that they care about, at least them women. I said, man, you, can't, you couldn't do that. How are you going to do it? They said, we were going to get him at night. We had already talked about the plan. He does demolition in the, in the, with the Marines. He does this. And this guy's an expert with that and that. I said, yeah, y'all could have. Took care of him. Can I tell you something? God's got something that'll take care of some things. Amen, amen, amen. See, sometimes we just need to be quiet. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. So you try to fight your own battle. Now let's look at verse two. And he said, Joshua, he said, Moses, my servant, is thee. Now rise. Now Moses, the servant of the Lord, he's dead. Now Moses, now we look at this, and God is telling Joshua, Moses is dead. And see, I said all that because the military operate everything by operation orders, at least in the army. They're going to have an op order for about any time they make a movement, there's an op order. Are you with me? Did you hear me say that before? See, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you something that tonight that, that, that if you want to be successful, I'm going to give you the five paragraphs. And if you can get those and master those, you'll be successful. I guarantee you. You can't fail. Amen. Unless you just want to. But in this, everything when I look at it, it's a total and complete op order. It's everything that we as a military operate. Do you not know that you're a soldier in God's arm? And see, it's amazing to me because we sometimes, as children of God, we just want to do what we want to do and how we want to do it and just, just hatch up a plan and go to work on it. But God doesn't operate like that. Come on. God is a God that does things decent and in order. Amen. If you're going to do something decent and in order, it has got to be thought out and planned out. Every time there's an operation within the military, I guarantee you there was a there was an MDMP that process, military decision making process. They go through that. I've been in those things. I've been in those meetings. Are you with me? There's an operation order. Let me tell you how it works. They sit and this is it. I'm in line with the scripture because when you look at this, this is a total military operation order. Set up that if you can disciple it or reveal that God reveal it to you, you can operate and flow not only in the anointing, but in the thing that God is calling you to do. Amen. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, but neither has been what? Into what? Neither has been into the heart of man what? The things what? But yet it's given to us to know the ways of God. So the only way we can know is if we spend time with God and in his word. Are you with me? God operates within the bounds of his word. Now, I know you his favorite child, but guess what? He will not break his word for you. <laughs> Are you with me? Now, let's look at something here. He's telling Joshua, God is telling John, listen, Moses, my servant, is what? He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> I'm going to go somewhere. Don't get upset with me. He said, Joshua, Moses is dead now. Okay? Let's, now, now, you do remember Moses. Moses, the, the, the one that was the drawn out one from the Nile. You do remember Moses that studied in the house of Pharaoh. You remember Moses. The one that, that got led it, that, 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 you know, God spoke to him on the backside of the mountain of Mount Sinai through the burning bush. That Moses, the one that went back into Egypt, talked to Pharaoh, one that God told him, say, see, I, in, in uh, Exodus 7 and 1, see, I have made you like a God unto Pharaoh. See, why did he make him a God? Because Pharaoh was considered a God. And so if you're going to go and confront a God, you don't want to confront one that's considered God like a natural man. See, can I tell you something? Your pastor and his wife, they are a gift to the body of Christ. 
And see, if you don't receive them as a gift, oh, that's just Pastor Todd. That's all you're going to get. But you have to see them as a gift from God to you. Amen. See, I tell my ministers all the time, and, and the congregation, when they come up there and stand, that is not just, just a, a, a Pastor Enzo. That's God speaking through Pastor Enzo. I think I'm speaking in tongue with no interpretation. Are you with me? See, because we want to keep it to, oh, that's just so-and-so. No, it's not. Amen. Did you hear what he said? That wasn't Dr. Foster. That was the Lord speaking through Dr. Foster to you. Amen. See, let me move on. Let's go. See, now he said Moses is dead. Joshua, Moses is dead. The one that led the children of Israel across the Red Sea, over 600,000 fighting men, about two to four million people. How would you like to leave two to four million? Yeah, right. And have the headache. Yeah, right. Mm hmm. All right. Now let's look at that Moses is dead. <laughs> they had a memorial for him. Normally you have a memorial for about seven days, but for Moses, they had it lasted 30 days. They missed Moses. The Moses that, that caused water from a rock, and then God told him to speak to the rock, and he struck it. Moses, the one that God allowed manna to come down from heaven, and, and God had walked with it and let him see, the, see his glory in the back of it. That Moses, he's dead. Now, Joshua, it's your time to lead the people. Uh, can I help you? See, you've been sitting down long enough. There is a Joshua on the inside of you. Come on, man. I'm, I'm, I'm. See, see, but you've been sitting there. Joshua had been with Moses for a long time, had studied Moses, had watched Moses. See, all of this, you, you shouldn't just take it haphazardly that Dr. Foster is preaching or Pastor Pat is preaching or when the man or woman of God that they send in just come up here. They are coming for a reason. Come on now. And see, we just go through the motions sometimes. Not y'all. I'm talking about the folks that's not here. And I'm not talking about you that's watching on live stream. I'm talking about the ones that's not watching. <laughs> okay. So we, there is a reason. Say reason. See, we take things haphazardly. We take things lackadaisical and casually. But God is allowing me to come from here. Do you not know when I go back on Friday night, late Friday night, I have a class Saturday morning, my doctoral student. Amen. I came on divine assignment, man. Come on now. I came because of, I came because of you. Somebody been praying. Joshua, Moses is dead. Let me help you out. There are some Moses in your life that need to die. <laughs> See, come on, come on. Now, now, why, now watch it. There, there are some things in your life, Moses, you need to let it die. Mo let Moses, Moses been good to you. I didn't say Moses wasn't good to you. I didn't say Moses uh, uh, couldn't have a, have a comfort you. I didn't say Moses have a walk with you. Are you with me? But as long as Moses was living, Joshua couldn't come in. As long as you keep looking at Moses and, really, and don't realize that Moses is dead, you can't get, you can't, Joshua can't come on. Moses is a good man. Moses was faithful. Moses did some great things. But Moses could not take them into the promised land. You will never get into the promised land looking at Moses. Moses can only get you to the point. But Moses can't take you to the next level. Never saying Moses not good. Not saying Moses didn't walk with him. Not saying Moses didn't hold your hand. Not saying Moses haven't been there for you. Moses been there, but it's time to have a memorial for Moses and let Moses go. 
<laughs> Are you with me? You wonder why you can't go forward and why Joshua can't rise up. Maybe because you're still looking at Moses. Are you with me? Oh, sucky, sucky. I think I hit you. Damn. See, you got to let Moses go so Joshua can come forward. You ever know how many drive automobiles or whatever? You ever notice that when you're driving, you're looking through that big window and you got that little mirror there and you look in there and you can see what's behind you. But notice, you don't look, stay and drive by that little mirror. Is that right? God is letting you know that when you look in that little mirror, it what's behind you is behind you, but what's before you is bigger than what's behind you. Are you with me? See, you're still looking back at Moses, and God is trying to tell you, you better look to Joshua. Joshua is going to take you to the next level. Joshua is going to take you to the promised land. You better let Moses go. You hear people say, well, when Reverend so-and-so, I don't know, I don't know if they do it here, but down in my hometown, I'm originally from North Carolina. Well, when Reverend so-and-so was here, we did it. Well, Reverend so-and-so is dead. He's been dead about 10 years. When are you going to move on? 20 years. Well, yeah, well, we used to do it this way when Reverend so and so. He did. Good man preached a lot of good messages, but he did. They, they had a funeral for him. They sung the song. They had a what? Repass and all. He's dead. Oh, that's so hard. No, I ain't. You got to move on. Amen. I oh, don't know. I don't want your business, man. Praise God. Praise God. It's time to let Moses go. I was in the study. And, and I noticed this. Moses was good. And the Lord said to me, he said this, and I wrote it down. I was in, really, I was in a hotel, and I, I was just going over. And he said, listen, he said, I want you to let them know right here. Uh, Dr. Foster got the vision. Oh, if he don't, then I heard wrong. He's got the vision, but he's been waiting for something to catch it, for someone to see it. But he said he can't wait no longer. Tell him he can't wait any longer. Can't keep circling and waiting and circling this hill. Tell him that the seventh day is coming. Jericho. <laughs> the seventh day is coming. You got it. See, you, you can't get into Jericho and circle it. And because Moses is gone. Keep looking at Moses. And when the seventh day coming, you still gonna be looking at Moses and they're gonna be gone. Oh, so God sent you here for such a time as this. It's not time. He said, it's time for you to take Bassett and the surrounding communities. You have something, you have that, that which is unique and that which is special to the glory of God for the benefit of the communities. It's time to move out. You have the word, you know, this is what I'm saying to the congregation too. You have the word, you know about faith, you know about time, but it's time to act on what you know. Are you hearing me? I think I'm, I'm going to take my time. Are you with me? This is your time. This is your season. The only way you can see what God has for you is that the eyes is that well, the eyes that haven't seen, the ears that haven't heard, nor been revealed in the heart of man, the thing that God has for them. The only way you will be able to see it, that you want to see it, is if you hear and move now. And then you, the more you move, the more will be revealed to you. But as long as you just sitting and waiting for another revelation, no more revelation until you move out. Are you with me? And then it said, you have the word. You have the word. Act on it. Move and it will come. More will come. A more deeper revelation. A stronger anointing. And then he said this. This is one of my. He said, tell him it's time to bust a move. Now see, you laughing. My, my folks at home, they get it. Tell somebody to bust a move. Bust a move. 
See, you, God didn't say that. See, that's what's wrong with you. You're leaning to your own understanding. It's, when you're talking about bust a move, that means you got to take action. And it's not just light action. You are, you are determined. See, you've been waiting and saying, Lord, give me a revelation. Give us a sign. He's got the vision. He's got it. Matter of fact, I tell you what. Can I tell on you? Let me tell on y'all. Okay. Let me get my phone. Boy, I took my time. Can I take my time? Hang on. Don't get mad with my love, y'all. Don't get it. Right, I saw this. You said this Oak Hill Cathedral of Glory. Congregation. That's y'all. How many Oak Hill folks? Okay, okay. Oak Hill Congregation. You said, we recognize Dr. Todd Foster as our pastor and teacher. We, the Oak Hill Congregation, are committed to the vision of the pastor. That's what you said. Empowering believers to overcome the world through faith in God's word and to impact. Say impact. Say it again. This world with God goodness. Listen, it's time for you to make an impact in this community. It's time you, God put you on this here for a reason to make an impact. Say impact. See, now just go ahead and tell you, say it's time for me to bust a move. See, if don't nobody else bust a move, you need to bust a move. Tell yourself, it's time to bust a move. You've been sitting down and circling this mountain and say, give me some revelation. Give me this. And God has sent revelation after revelation, a word after a word. And you steep. Come on, somebody. He's got the vision. He's ready to go. Now he's ready to bust a move. And I start by to tell you, when you get ready to bust a move this time, I'm right there with you. Finances and all God. I come from South Carolina and bring my folks and we'll have a good time. And you know I do it. They've been here. They would have been here the next some would have been here early, but we got some things to do. Well, you let them come on the weekend and say, we're going to the basket at the doctor fall. They coming. I don't know why they love him so much. They love him more and more. I got to talk to them about that. Say, bust a move. See, you've been sitting down. I ain't fussing at you. I'm saying that God got some things for you to do. And it's time to move out. Say, move out. See, you've been trying to, can I help you? You've been trying to play cautious. Show me, Lord. Help me. And he's been showing you. Oh, my God. I'm glad I drove tonight so I can run out to the car. Help me, Marine. Maybe. Leave me out to the car so I can run out of here. He's he, he been showing you and giving you the word through this man of vision. And some of you have been saying, I oh, don't know. Stop. It's your time. He's got his marching orders. Amen. He's got the vision. And see, you want to grow. You want to develop. The only way you can grow and de- how many want to develop their faith? I'm going to help you. I'm going to show you. The only way you can do it is by acting on it. Well, what if I miss it? Well, what if you have it right? Can I help you out? I served 14 months in Iraq. Before we went to Iraq, I said, man, I got to hurry. I got to get to those five things. I said, Lord, we're going to Iraq. I was, at first I was at West Point, all right? Everywhere that I went in the military, that we went in the military, we saw miracles. I'm going to tell you about some on Friday night. We didn't. I, 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 people came out of comas. We, we saw people that had crooked spine, straighten up. Come on, instantly. Uh, come on now. We, we saw a lady with, with, with one leg longer than the other grow right in front of our eye. We saw it. See, I didn't come to play. Come on now. And, and, and you'll hear some more Friday night. We, I think we're going to do healing. I want to. Well, that's what the Lord needs me. But we, we, he take over any time he want to. But see, that's because I act on it. Well, what if you get it wrong? Well, what if I get it right? Amen. See, I don't debate. I don't debate that thing. You see, I move out. Say move out. See, you want to move out. But see, some of you have been sitting complacent and, and just waiting for the Lord to show you something and do you something. If he show you, it's not faith. If you act on it, it's faith. Come on now. It's not, I didn't say there's something wrong with asking for a sign. I didn't say that. But it's better to just say, hey, Lord, I'm taking you at your word. I believe that you want me to move out. I'm going to do this thing. Tell your name, I'm going to do this thing. See, God wants you to move on out. See, he has the vision. Now, now what, man, you got to realize what God is doing in this season. Joshua, Moses is dead. It's time for you to move out. 
Joshua is getting marching orders from God himself. And a lot of us will say, when the Lord tell me, then I'll do it. Well, he's been telling you for umpteen years through Dr. Foster and his wife and different ones, and you still have not bust to move. I came tonight to tell you it's time to bust a move. Tell your name, I'm going to bust a move. God has sent me to tell you it's time for you to move out. Tell your neighbor, move on out. See, you got comfortable and complacent, and you still talking about Moses, and Moses been dead 15 years. <laughs> Can I tell you? Don't mess around. See, I got, I got this next part. Leave to my, leave that to my. Church. Don't mess around. See and get left behind, and don't get over to the promised land because Moses is there. All right, now let's look at Joshua. Moses is dead. Now it's your time. You've been his minister. You've seen everything that he did. You know everything to do. Like I said, when we, let me back up. When I was going to Iraq, the Lord and I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I want to be your prophet there. I'm the chaplain. Are you with me? And I want to know, so when things happen, I want to see it before it happened. I want to be able to tell my command. Because my the religious program fall under the commander. Are you with me? And so we went over there. We I was covered. We covered. I was responsible for an area the size of Switzerland. I had six or seven chaplains under me. I was the brigade chaplain. My commander was under. So I had to make sure that we had religious service cover in that entire spectrum of operation. Are you with me? Now. When we before we went there, when we got there, as soon as we got there, man, we were losing people. People were being killed left and right. And I said, Lord, what's going on? And he showed me in a dream. And I went to, now see, when the Lord showed you something, you need to act. Well, Lord, show me again. If, if, if Dr. Foster said, then I do it. If this person do it, then I said, well, you asked him to show me. And he showed it to you. And then watch this. I went to my commander with the dream. My commander was out. I told the exo. I said, exo, look here. I said, I don't know how the Lord talked to you, but he talked to me through dreams and all. Okay. I said, and this is what he showed me. I said, we done lost about uh, 15, 16 soldiers or something like that. And I said, they didn't have to. I said, this. I said, put that. I said, this. The Lord showed me. He showed me that we was going around a cliff, and we had a vehicles going around. It was it was going higher and higher. And I said, it was the guy was driving the vehicle, and he had trailers behind him, but it was going around the curve too fast. And so that trailer was dropping off the cliff. They were dropping off. I said, the Lord is letting me know that we are going too fast. We just got here. I said, you need to let the commander know that when they see him. I said, because I don't know when I'm going to see him again, but you need to let the commander know. And the commander called a meeting. Watch this. For the entire operation, all of the battalion commanders and the soldiers, he called a meeting for the entire spectrum on Fob Kalzoo where we were. And he stood there and had the commanders to come in. He said, hey, and he gave them some guidance. And the last thing he said is said, we are going too fast. We got to slow this thing down. This is a marathon, not a sprint. And the XO looked over at me. I said, and guess what? The casualty rate went way down. The only people we lost then were through neglect. Are you with me? See, now, what if I, and I had, so, suppose I didn't say anything and I asked the Lord to be, my, be his prophet. See, you asked the Lord for something, but you won't speak up. Come on, Come on. And then you want the Lord to show you something that's the same. And you know what the Lord said? You haven't done, you haven't acted on what I showed you the first time. I want to give you some more. God. I won't. But I can't give you no more until you empty yourself of what I already given you. Can I help you out? You already constipated with what I gave you. You got to get it out of you. Amen. You want some fresh stuff. You want a fresh word. You want that deep, fresh revelation. And I wanted to give it to you. And the Lord said, no, give this. Because I got something for them to do. They, they own this here. I got them in a strategic location for them to take over. Let me run. Now he said, let me say, he gave Joshua this art oil. Watch this art oil. He's telling Joshua now, listen, Joshua, I want you to take over. I want you to take this place. Say, take over. See, you see, we're so busy trying to fit in, and God didn't see you here to fit in. Yeah. 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 
He sent you to take over. See, can I help you out? It's in the Bible. You can see in, when Joshua and them get ready to go into the promised land, Joshua sent out two spies. They sent out 10 or 12 before. They learned a lesson from that. They sent out two. Joshua sent out two this time. Are you with me? Don't send out so many. You can't have yourself surrounded by any and everybody. Come on. Amen. Sent out two spies. And when they went in, they found out that why, why, why they were some of the people Joshua said, remember when they were Moses? And they said, we can't take this land. The giants in the land. We saw them big, tall giants, that, that downing fella. You know, John, tall, no. Saw the tall giants in the land. We can't take that land. But they forgot that the Lord said, I'm going to be with you. Yeah. Yeah. How many know the Lord is with you? So what you afraid of? What you afraid of? See, and now they sent out two. And when they go in, they found out that the people were more afraid of them than they were of them. See, the thing that you're afraid of, God has already taken care of. He's just waiting for you to get up and move. Tell your neighbor, it's already taken care of. See, God is waiting for you to get up and bust a move. When you bust a move, God won't move until you move. When the, when the oh man, when the, when the lepers, the four sick, dying lepers, you remember those boys? They were sick, dying. They said, well, we're going to sit we here till we die. If we go back into the city, we're going to die. If we go into the Syrian camp and if they kill us, we're going to die. Say, but if they spare us, then we'll live. They went into four. Say four. four. Say it again, four. Four sick, dying lepers cast outside the city, decided to get up and move. Guess what? When they decided to move, the Bible said God calls their footsteps that sound like an army. See, when you move, what you are saying and what I'm saying, I may be saying one thing, but you are hearing it like God wants you to hear. See, when God, when you get decide to fight and everything to get up, you're going to find out that you don't have to fight. See, when you get up to make the decision to do something, you're going to find that the door has already been opened. See, but you got to decide to do something. The thing that's been hindering you and holding you back, when you decide to move out, you're going to find that the thing is going to dissipate. Tell your neighbor, bust a move, bust a move. You got to bust a move up here. You've been so quiet. God kept you through COVID. God kept you through all of this. And now you just want to sit and be quiet and give him a little trip. You got to bust out and praise God. Every now and then you have to tell God, thank you. Thank you for what you brought me, God. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for walking with me. Thank you for making ways for me. Thank <laughs> Is that right? Well, you, you, you know, listen, listen, listen. You got to realize what God is doing. Let me get to the opera so I can go back to the hotel no more. Listen, he told, God told you something. Like, when you move out and do something now, do it to the glory of God. And he's got your back. Amen. We did a conference. We, we did that with, with Dr. Uh, Evans last week before last. And we didn't have the turnout that we want. I got all, I was about to get all upset. And the Lord said, uh, you looking at the numbers again, Austin. Because <laughs> he got me one time about that. When I, you know, when we was in Washington, D.C., did a gathering of the nation, little country boy. And, and we needed 100000 Now, How much did that thing cost to do that gathering of the nation in Washington, D.C.? About over 300 Yeah. Over 300000 I'm a little country boy. You, you understand what I'm saying? And we had to have that money. You know, people in D.C., they didn't care about no faith. Show me the money. And you had to have it paid beforehand. And we were, we were short by about 100000 right? And we, had, we was approaching their deadline. Amen. And my wife said, honey, I know the Lord will provide. And everybody was there. Every time we have a meeting, uh, that was for 30 minutes. I'm going for 30 more. No, I'm not. <laughs> And he said, listen, see, because can I help you out? This is why I'm telling you that. Take your time, son. Because, see, you won't do something because you're looking at the money. And not looking to God. I, now, 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 I'm not upset with you. God is trying to get you to the level where your faith is supposed to be. And believe him. 
We in, in DC, can I tell you, let me tell you DC first. The, it, it, we was about three, two or three weeks before the deadline, right? And man, we had to have that money. I didn't have a hundred thousand. Didn't have it, man. But I knew that the Lord had told me to do it. And I told him that. You know I, mean? I said, and every time they would ask me down, oh, pastor, I said, yeah. Oh, <laughs> where the money coming from? Where we getting the money? They didn't know how much money I had. I never talked to them about money. All I would say, the Lord will provide. Amen. That's all I say. Is that right? Now, my wife knew everything because she stayed with me. She was with me. She was keeping the foot. Divided. She said, honey, we, we ain't got no money. I said, Lord, she said, we got to answer these people three weeks. We got to let them know, is it going to go or not? She said, well, what we going to do? I said, honey, the Lord will provide. Amen. I was out there, man, because we had already spent over 200000 right? Over two. That was all right. Amen. Man called me on a Saturday morning. He said, uh, Chaplain Down. I said, yes, sir. He said, um, are you standing or sitting? I need some money. I said, what you want me to do, stand or sit? He said, I said, I, he said, well, what you want to do? I said, I don't know. He said, well, I'm looking at over the records or something. And he said, I got a check that I'm going to send you. I said, all right now. And he said, it's 100,000. You, you didn't hear what I said. He said, it's 100,000. I said, say on, God, say on. The FedEx truck came up there. I signed it, 100,000. I said, the Lord will pro See, God is waiting for you to step out. See, when you step out by faith, see, you've been preaching. But not that preached to you about faith. You heard faith. You got faith running out your ears, your mouth, and your nose. It's time for you to bust a move on faith. See, it's time to put up a shut up. Come on now. See, God is God. See, you know, when, when they play poker sometimes, and they say check or whatever they say. I don't know how to gamble. But when they say, okay, what you got? You got to put up a shut up. You, it's time for you to show your car. It's time for you to show your faith. You got strong faith. You have a mighty faith. You got faith that tear down things. You got faith that can create things. You just got to activate it. Tell your neighbor, activate it. Well, we did this conference. And see, I was sitting down after I did the conference about time in Washington, D.C. I was sitting down, I'm hoping and complaining. Didn't have all that. Well, I couldn't see behind me and on the side of me. They said it was so many people standing behind me and on the side. I don't know. I was looking out in front at the empty seats. Can I help you? Stop looking at the empty seats. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, that's what some of you are afraid of. Yes. Well, what if we do and don't nobody come? Well, what if one come and get saved? Amen. Amen. Jesus went on the other side of the river and only got one man saved one time. Amen. Lord. <laughs> Lord. Lord. <laughs> look, look, look. And so I was sitting there, Pastor Tom, so all that money I spent over three hundred thousand dollars. Don't see nobody out in front of me, man. I mean, boy, I'm just. I mean, Lord, I I could have taken that money and used it for this. And you sound almost like Judas does, or the disciples. I could have used this money for that. I could use it for that three hundred thousand. And then look, all these empty seats. Yeah. And the Lord let me complain. And then when it was like He said, "You finished." I said, and this and this and this. And then I went on some more. And he said, you finished? I said, yeah. He said, how much did it cost you? I said, nothing but my faith. He said, thank you very much. He said, see, you're looking at the wrong thing. I said, what do you mean? He said, you're looking at the people. I'm looking at your obedience. He did what I asked you to do. And he did the same thing with Dr. Evan. I said, Lord, I'm telling you all these, uh -huh, and all this costing me money. Didn't even cost 100000 and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay. He said, but now, and when it was all over, I knew the purpose of it. And he said, did this pastor come and say this to you? I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. See, we look at the wrong things. We start looking at the money. We start looking at the crowd.
We start, what if I have this man to come over and the place be empty? The wrong thing. God wants faithful people. He sent you here for a reason. Let me give you these five things. I'm going home real quick. He sent you here for a reason. God bless. See, you got to go when the other folks don't go. I, in, a, in the military, I, what the military do? do, you know what? And I'm going to tell you, if you want to be successful in anything, do this. Military, before they do anything, before they do any operation, they're going to send out what is called a warning order. We call it warning order. order. They're going to send it out. That warning order is sent to let you know that the real deal is coming. This is what's going to happen. This is what it is not the operation order. It's to warn you that something is coming. Can I help you out? I'm giving you your warning order now. Because God is about to send something through here that's ready for to happen. I'm telling you, I got to take my time, man. He's giving, he's trying to get, he's trying to get Oak Hill to the point that he won't get him so that he know, you'll know that see, you're not in this thing by yourself, that God has not forgotten you, that he got you on this hill in this strategic location for a reason. You know what, when I was coming in, when I come, when I was even at the hotel, the Lord showed me, man, lights coming up through this place, cars coming up this place at night to be fed the word of God. I saw it. You got to see it in the spirit, man. I saw that it was almost, I said, Lord, what is it? It was almost like the field of dream. If you build it, they will come. If you do it, they're going to come. Oh, man. Anybody, anybody, anybody is this making sense? And so the warning order let you know that something to come. I can't even serve notice tonight, not not tomorrow night, but tonight. The God, you got to get ready for the for the operation order. The warning order come and tell you that the operation of the order is going to come, and this is what it's going to look like. Expect this, but expect when you move. Expect God to move. Expect miracles to happen. Expect doors to be open. Expect the promotion to come. Expect the unexpected. That's all I can say. Then the operation order. See, operation order. And see, God told Joshua, I gave you the warning order because what, what was the warning order, Joshua? You've been studying Moses the whole time. You've been in ministry with Moses all the whole time. So that was the warning order. Now it's your turn. Can I help you out? It's your turn now. Say it again, baby. Now everybody say, it's my turn. Amen. Say it again. It's my turn. I didn't say the pastor turn. I didn't say pastor Pat turn. I say who turn? My, my turn. Personal. See, God, don't worry about the pastor. You worry about what the pastor do. What pastor? What about you? You be faithful. Yes, sir. <laughs> you do what you're supposed to do. Amen. See, because when you do what you're supposed to do, everything's gonna be all right. The operation order is the real deal. Are you with me? Everything the military do, they do an operational. Do you remember when they, they, they sent out uh, when the guy was on the news? I think with England, Craig England, something like that. And they said that the Americans just left out of Iraq overnight, just left them hanging and all this kind of stuff. They didn't even know that the American was leaving. Did you remember that? Did you anybody see that on the news? You saw that on the news? I said that. I said, that's a lie. The military don't just jump and leave out. They're gonna send you a warning order and operation order. When I went to Iraq, we was there for 14 months, we spoke in 12. That we knew when we were gonna leave. Within a month, we knew who was gonna after being there, we knew who when we were gonna leave. We knew when we was gonna who was replacing us. We knew. Let me tell you how they, the Americans couldn't just pull out. Think about it. I, I said, I told my wife, I said, he lied. He was just riding his bicycle on the airfield. The Americans just pulled out of Iraq, just left them hanging. No, they didn't. Think, the, think, think. Amer there was helicopters over there, right? American helicopters. How did they get the helicopters back? You got to have a chalk. You have to have a time frame when they're going to load up those helicopters on the airplane. Those helicopter wings and all, all that kind of stuff got to be separately broken down and all folded up. You got to have how many helicopters can get on one of those airplanes. Are you with me? All of that has to be strategically planned. Then you got the big old Chinook, the one with the double blade. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The Chinook, where he carried the guy. They got to be placed somewhere. Where are they going to go? You, they didn't just leave overnight. 
And then you got all of these soldiers that got to leave. They leave at night by chalk. You in chalk one, chalk three, chalk four. And they're going to leave at night. All of them can't leave at one time. You have to plan when no aircraft going to come in and take people back. And then you got the equipment. How the equipment, you got to get the equipment out and take the equipment back. All that stuff is playing way ahead of time. Are you with me? You said, well, they left some equipment. That was the equipment that they didn't want. The Americans didn't want. They knew they were leaving. Can they help you out? Contractor came to our church. He said, and we were talking about it. He said, oh, we knew at least three months before we left. If the contractor knew three months, let me tell you, the our military knew six to ten months ahead of time before they left. And the Iraqis knew it. Don't fool yourself. What am I saying? God has already given you a warning order. He's already given you an order. It's up to you to plan now. Watch this. Let me give you the five steps and I'm getting out of here. All right. Let me, man. I see what just wait till tomorrow night. Number one, number one, the number one in the operation order. The first thing that you got to have in that, see if you, in every op order, in every op order, operation order, this is how it operates. The first thing you're going to have, and John is in your Bible, is the missions. I mean, the situation. Say situation. In the situation, you got to consider the enemy forces, the enemy forces and the friendly forces. You got to know who's friendly, who's the enemy. See, that's what's wrong. We got church folk fighting church folk. You, I, why are you fighting each other? We call that friendly. Somebody got killed by friendly fire. They got fire in the line of fire. And, and, and all this. I've been church hurt. You've been job hurt, but you're still going to work. Okay, I ain't missing. Okay, you got to know the situation. Say situation. What's the situation with Joshua? God tell Joshua, no man will stand before you all the days of your life. As I with Moses, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. Don't you worry about the enemy. I got them taken care of. And God already told you, don't you worry about the enemy. I'm going to fight your battle. So why are you fighting if God fighting? Are you with me? Number two, there's the mission. Say mission. What is Joshua mission? Joshua said, you got, you, got, you got to conduct a movement for over two, to, two million to four million people across the wilderness and across the Jordan River. He's got to take them into the promised land. Now, he's got to do that. Now, Pastor Tom got to do that. I look at this with my own situation, church. What is my mission? What is the, what's the situation? What's the mission? This is what we have to do. You got to know the who. Who, who is he going to do it? The, who, who does he have? He's got to coordinate with the leaders and the tribe. Who? The children of Israel. That's the who. Who are they? The children of Israel. Uh, what, what we got to do? You got to take them across the river. You got to be specific with folks. When? Now. Get ready now, Joshua. Three days. I want them to concentrate yourself. Okay? Now, why? God shares so. See, we want to know why so much. Why this, God? Why that? Do it. Because he said it. You remember? You not, when I was growing up, you, we didn't ask our prayer. Why do you want me to do this? Pray. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Just keep looking up there. Never know you got popped like that. Uh, God says so. It's to fulfill his promise to Abraham and the others. Well, to a land that God's going to show them because that land is going to be divided. I'm going to break that all down Sunday when I get back to my church and all. What? The next thing in the operational order is the execution. Say execution. See, a lot of times we want to just put something together at the last minute for the Lord. No, in, in, you know, in, in, in the church, I, they have a 90 day plan. You have to have that thing organized and planned out 90 days in advance. You don't come to me and hand me something because what well, I told them what to need, what you're going to do. I, they have other things. They, they've been in training with 90 days. If they come 30 days, they say, well, we're going to do this. When are you going to do it? 30 days. It ain't happening. Is that right? I've canceled a couple events like that. I canceled a women's thing, right? I said, well, what, what? No, you ain't playing that. You're going to throw something together for the Lord? Now, if the military, the military playing 15, 15 years out in that band, you mean to tell me we can't do that for the Lord? We can't do 90 days? We ain't doing it. Why, why? Because you didn't plan it. You didn't think about it. You got to execute. What about this? You got to execute. You got to look at something. Tell your neighbor, look at something. 
Then you got to you got to execute the concept of the operation. Let's look at what God is telling. He's telling him the route, which way to go. You got to cross Jordan River, which is near Jericho. Are you with me? It's eighty to 90, 110 feet when you look at it across from the wilderness. And the thing could be uh, uh, at least 10 feet deep at the south spot. So you got to pick out your crossing spot. You got to know where you're crossing. Tell your neighbor, you got to know where you're crossing. See, a lot of times we're just going something, but he telling the children of Israel, you got to scout out the land. Look at the crossing, where the crossing point. Tell your neighbor, I reached my crossing point. Oh, so okay. watch this. See, you got, see, you're waiting to cross where everybody else cross. You're waiting to cross with everybody else, but you already, you got, see, you can't cross with everybody else cross. You might not be as successful as somebody else, but if you reach your crossing point, see, when you reach your crossing point, you'll say, I'm crossing if don't nobody else cross. I'm going across Jordan. Tell them I'm going on cross. See, a lot of people want to stay over. See, a lot of people want to, they want to get to Jordan. Jordan look intimidating. Jordan can look like a swell. Jordan can look like a lot of stuff is going on. But you got to reach your crossing point. See, when you had enough, you let that stuff go. You got to tell your neighbor enough is enough. Tell your neighbor enough is enough. Oh, uh, I reached my crossing point. I reached my crossing point. See, I'm tired of going through a whole lot of stuff and people don't want to go and I'm trying to drag folks along. I reached my crossing point. In other words, if they don't want to do it, God will send me somebody else. I'm all right about it. See, you got to reach your crossing point with some people. Listen, I'm tired of trying to drag you along. I'm tired of trying to drag Ray Ray, Billy Bob, and our Shaquita. I reach my crossing point with them. If you don't want to go, I'm going by myself. Because the Lord said he would never leave me nor forsake me. I reach the crossing point. I'm going to bust a move if I got to do it by myself. I reached my crossing point. I'm going on cross this Jordan. Because, one, see, a lot of people waiting for Jordan to come to them so they can wait for everything. And when they see everybody else going, then they'll go. But God is saying not so. You got to go for yourself. Man, I'm going too long today. The next thing, man, oh, Lord, you, you got to sustain it. In other words, you got to consider, you got to consider the food, what they could eat, what they could get over there. And God said, don't worry about it. The clothes that they had on 40 years in the wilderness, they didn't wear out. Feet didn't swell. See, you're worrying about the wrong thing. How are we going to do this? What are we going to eat? What are we going to do? Don't worry about it. Do you know the God that you serve? See? <laughs> military. And then the last thing, and I'm getting out here, command and control. Say command and control. In other words, what is the signal? What is the signal? Say signal. See, in the military, every time when we was in Iraq and when we do war games, we have a certain frequency and a password that we own. <laughs> and that password changed every day and the frequency changed every day. Sometimes they may change it twice a day, depending on, and they change it so it would be disguised from the enemy. Are you with me? And so if you mess around and you get on the wrong, if you on yesterday's frequency and, and, and we're operating today, you're going to be left out. And guess what? Those that's following you, they're going to be left out because you in charge, but you on the wrong frequency. Oh, so come on. Tell your neighbor, check your frequency. See, a lot of times people are on the wrong frequency. It's not that, it's not that God is not talking. It's that you on the wrong frequency. Are you with me? I went to my neighbor's, a friend of mine's house one time, and, and I was, my wife, we was at West Point, and, and it was a hill, Dr. Foster Lake, like the hill you have, you coming up to the church, kids or not. And the little dog went, ran to the door, started barking. I said, man, what's wrong with the dog? I didn't see nothing, didn't see no lights or anything. He said, he hear a car. I said, he hear a car. See no light. After a while, the car came up. But it wasn't that 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 something wrong with the dog. The dog was on a different frequency than what I was on. 
I wasn't on that dog frequency. So the dog could hear something I couldn't hear. See, a lot of times when you hear the dogs barking and you don't understand it, you say, that dog keep all that noise. I wish he shut up. It's not the dog. The dog is talking to another dog on another frequency that you don't understand. And if you time for the church to get on the frequency that God has, is that right? See, you on the wrong frequency. And every now and then, can I tell you this, that when we're in the military, we had what the headquarters was sent out a transmitter. They would transmit, and every now and then they would transmit. They would look at, and and say, "Man, something must be wrong with the receiver. Something is going on." I didn't get the message. I didn't get the memo. It was it's nothing wrong with the transmission. Something is wrong with the receiver. <laughs> Can I tell you? It's nothing wrong with the transmitter. The transmission is all right. Yeah. The transmission never fails. Uh, the transmitter always on time. The transmitter is there. You got to get on the right and be ready to receive what's been said. See, you ready for me to leave and I'm ready to leave. But you got to receive what God said. It's transmitted to you. That you the head and not the tail. You above and not beneath. Uh, you're blessed when you go and come in. The transmitter is going out. But are you on the right frequency? Can you receive? Come on, stand. I got to go home. I got to go. I know that was long tonight. But let me tell you, over here, God got great things for you. If you only knew, your pastor now, <laughs> great things are in store for you. And not only for over here, but listen, sometimes maybe you have churches for which some of them don't. You know? Your church is best. This guy has the favor by God. You can do some great things for the kingdom. You can do some great and awesome things. Powerful, mighty things for the kingdom. Have no fear. And I'm going to say you like to do with Dr. Foster. When God says, be not dismayed. Because be not afraid. Have no fear for the Lord your God is with you. I'm saying that he's with you. And you're going in when it, I'm trying to go on, when it don't look like it and when it don't feel like I'm here to tell you, God is with you and he'll never leave you in the valley. Amen. I got to go home. Listen, I love y'all. Let me tell you. I know that was long. Long enough what I want to, but I had to get that out. I didn't even get to where I wanted to get out. But I'm telling you, if you only could see what the Lord is showing me, that it has for you. If you, if you act, your back is going to be full. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Do the operation, Lord. God got you. And can I say this? It's time to let Moses go. Have a memorial service for him. Weep for him, cry for him, bury him, and move on. Amen. 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 Father, we praise you and thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for each one that's here. Lord, we honor you. And I pray, Father, that your word will be seed in good soil. Let it spring up now with a hundredfold return. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, God.